at cemeteries across the United States are grave markers that have no names on them. And many graves around the country not even marked, estimated to contain the bodies of tens of thousands of Native American students from boarding schools run by the US government and Catholic nuns from the mid 1800s to the late 1960s. A damning legacy of abuse against Native American boarding school students recently acknowledged by the U.S. government after an investigation by its Department of the Interior. The investigation being monitored by Native American advocates like Samuel Torres here in Minneapolis, Minnesota with the nonprofit National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition. Torres says the investigation into U.S.-run boarding schools has determined that generations of Native American children were forced into boarding schools for two reasons, to assimilate them into white culture and to claim tribal lands for the country's westward expansion. The alleged causes of students' deaths range from disease and illness to physical abuse. Many students at these schools, says Torres, literally ripped from their parents' arms. The first generations of boarding school children were forcibly removed from their families. They experienced some of the most terrible atrocities that you would imagine for a child. They would be rubbed with, with kerosene, scrubbed with harsh bristles. The children's long hair was forcefully cut off, long hair that to American Indians represents the very essence of their identity. Their freedom and strong spirit was no longer permitted. Their hair would be forcibly cut short. Terrifying to, to think how someone could treat children in this way. Kids as young as three, four, five years old, just taken from the arms of their, their parents Children were punished often for speaking their languages, for practicing their traditions. They were forced to learn the tenets of Christianity. These children were treated like uh, prisoners. The children were often locked in cells, often not provided appropriate meals, malnourished, neglected. The first official government-run boarding school was founded in 1879 in Carlisle, Pennsylvania by U.S. Army General Richard Pratt, who was quoted saying, the only good Indian is a dead Indian. He said, to quote a great general, the only good Indian is a dead Indian, that boarding schools were an opportunity to kill the Indian in them in order to save the man. Thus far, the deaths of 500 children have been documented, and that's with only 19 institutions surveyed so far out of nearly 500 around the country. That's less than 4% of institutions that have been surveyed so far. If we scale 500 deaths across almost 500 institutions in the United States, we should expect somewhere within the tens of thousands to be reported. Leona May Kiddo is one of the few living survivors of Native American boarding schools. Showing us one of a number of scars she has, she says that she received from Catholic nuns who beat her, she says, with yardsticks as punishment whenever she spoke her native Indian language in the class. And I talk Indian and I used to get hit. And I have scars behind my neck from that, around my arms. I have scars from being hit. And I was always scared of the sisters. I was hurt a lot. I was alone a lot. Never had a mom that stayed with the home with me every day. Leona says she often blamed herself as a young girl for being abused because she looked different than her white schoolmasters. Thought to myself, I, I was an ugly little girl, nobody liked me. I'm still feeling hurt, sad, because nobody took care of me. Her husband, Norm, she says, has helped her shoulder the pain 
all these years. Someone this precious had to go through something like that. As loving and caring as she is, all the hurt and pain that she went through, when she talks about that, it really hurts me deep. The people who are supposed to teach you Christianity would beat you like that. And they're supposed to be the ones helping you, saving you. But instead of doing that, they scarred her. They hurt her. However, not all Native American boarding school students report having negative experiences at these institutions. For example, the book Pipestone is a former student's positive review about his experience at the Pipestone Indian Boarding School here in Pipestone, Minnesota. The former student, Adam Fortunate Eagle, calls his time here in the late 1930s, quote, a little bit of heaven. We found this book at the Pipestone County Museum, where we also found newspaper articles and burial documents about at least four Indian children who died at the Pipestone boarding school. Leona Kiddo's own mother happened to attend the Pipestone boarding school in the early 1900s, telling Leona that behind this abandoned house on the property that was the school superintendent's home at the time, several students went missing in these woods behind it. They were said to be running away and fell into some open water wells. Some bodies were said to be buried around here in these woods on what is now Pipestone National Monument. Pipestone, in the woods, in them trees up there and down on this side, all them trees, they had a lot of them buried there. And my mom used to tell me they couldn't go down there because there were people buried there because she went to school there. This is something that needs to be known in our society that is fundamentally underexplained, underexamined, misunderstood, or explained away as that was then. And this is a new way. This, we're in a new chapter of American history. In Pipestone recently over the Memorial Day holiday, when the nation honors its military dead, we discovered that non-Indian residents here know nothing or very little about Native American boarding schools and what went on inside of them, including this one just down the street from Main Street. A recent survey asked how many states in the U.S. teach anything about what happened at U.S.-run Native American boarding schools. Remarkably, only five states out of 50 teach anything about it. There are only five states in the country that we have tracked that even have a mention of boarding schools. If that isn't an indication of how the education system that we have today doesn't value the real history that has brought us where we are today in the United States. I, I don't know what is. The reality that we have students from all backgrounds in this country that are basically kept in the dark of this history. How can one in good faith and good conscience trust the American schooling system today? The U.S. government's investigation into boarding school deaths is slow going because the deaths of Native American students back then were said to be seldom, if at all, documented. For example, here in Pipestone, there are 77 graves in this 1800s era cemetery with grave markers that have no names on them, that many Native Americans in this region believe contain the bodies of boarding school students. Non-Indians buried in the cemetery have a proper grave with names. However, very little is known about the dead in these graves, nor has there been much interest to find out. 
For example, according to this email from the city of Pipestone, no one has contacted the city of Pipestone wanting to investigate deaths of Native American boarding school children. And no one has inquired about exhuming the unmarked graves. And other crude, long forgotten graves are believed to be spread out on Pipestone National Monument land, with no indication that anyone will be investigating them anytime soon. There are about 4 million full-blooded Native Americans in the United States in 574 federally recognized Indian tribes. Half of all American Indians to this day are said to live on reservations across the country that were established by the U.S. government as far back as the late 1700s to control the movements of Indians as white settlers were given Indian land. One of those reservations here in Flandro, South Dakota, the Flandro Santee Sioux Indian Reservation. Our traditional name is Wakbai Baksha. The tribe's language director, Dustin Bolio, says he's committed to reintroducing the native language, Dakota, to future generations here. Bolio teaches his young son, Mato, and other young Indians today that the English language can often be a language, he says, of lies. For example, the broken peace treaties and promises of the white man. To more modern times, Hollywood films portraying Indians as the bad guys back in the day. But in English, you can lie. In English, you can trick, you can fool. By comparison, he says the Indian language is more of a vibe one gives or gets based on human instincts or natural instincts, a vibe or feelings inspired by the wind and from all living things, he says. For example, this horse on the reservation stands for hours under this road sign. No one tells the horse to leave, it just eventually does on its own, based on a feeling not on spoken words. And when we speak our language, everything hears. Everything hears. The, the earth hears. The land, the, the animals, the trees, everything, the spirits, uh, the ancestors, all those things, they, 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 they hear us. They hear us when we speak our language. The Indian language prohibited in U.S. government boarding schools for more than a century, he says, which resulted in generations of Indian children no longer learning their own history, a history that was a spoken history passed down to them through their Indian language. U.S. boarding schools, he says, attempting to force Indian children to forget about their past. What was taken away from us, especially our language, because our language was key to everything. It was key to all of it. Save the man, kill the Indian. And now that motto was forced on children. And it, it, it breaks my heart because I, I have children. I have my own kids. I know I would be upset if my children had to go through things like that. What do you want for your children? Would you allow somebody to come in your house take everything from you. Would you allow that today? Would you allow that? Or would you stand up and fight and give your life up for your children? You would do that. I guarantee you would do that. You would fight for, for that. Fight for life. That's all that happened here, is we fought for that. And we were punished for being the people, the people of the land. That history needs to be known. We can't let that happen again.